So hi and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. As you know on these we look at gaming technology and we do reviews on products. Generally today though we're going to take a look at a ether mining PC. We're going to be doing the start of building it, what components you need to the installation and actually actively getting mining. This entire video will show you the start to finish. So some of the products here are being displayed and we'll go for those in detail in a minute of what each one is. I'll also post up at the same time other alternatives if you can't find these in the market because at the moment the demand is quite high. So I've cut this down to a budget build. This build has the potential to be expanded. You can have to take up to six GPUs and it'll need an additional 750 power supply or to be swapped out for something like an 1100 for a single one. The case itself was something that I had lying around and you can build these in frames. Um, but I found this case just lying around in my cupboard. So starting off here, this is a scan disk. This is a 128 gigabyte drive and this was 58 pounds UK. I found a USB pen drive that I had. We've got a HyperX Fury Black Series 4GB stick around 233Hz, that was £34. The next one is an optional piece. This is a TP-Link Wi-Fi smart plug. This is so you can analyze the power. And this was £29.99. Next item I had to get second hand is the Radeon Nitrous Sapphire. This is due to demand. This was £350, which is quite expensive. There's also a few other good options here. You could use the RX 580, you could use the GTX 1060 or GTX 1070. I'm also using the Intel Pentium Dual Core G4400, which is 3.3 gigahertz. This is 48 pounds. This includes the cooler itself, which we'll be using in stock. There's no need for a custom cooler. I went with the EVGA Supernova power supply. This is a 750 watt, so it'll hold up to three cards potentially. This is a modular one. This came in at 115 UK pounds, slightly expensive. I only bought one so I to keep the price down for this build. You can get a slightly larger power supply, about like 1300 or 1100. It costs you slightly more money, but you won't need to upgrade this in the future. I'll be able to maintain six or seven GPUs. If you need to add some more GPUs to this and you want to keep the 750, you just have to buy an additional one. It's a lot of components. It's got some Velcro straps. You want to keep your tight cable tidy. So you've got plenty of modular support here with keeping your cable management down. As always from Dre, this product is nice. So it's certainly a good power supply, one of the best. And it's worth investing when you do a build like this. Next I went with the Asus motherboard. This one holds six GPUs. There are some that hold seven GPUs. Check in the list if you want to get that additional capacity. This is the Asus, it's an 1151 socket. It's the Z270 and it came in at 115 pounds. So that's the kit you're going to need to start off with this mining PC. This will give you everything you need to get going. Probably at the one the least cost if you're going to buy it brand new potentially. You can get this stuff secondhand then it's certainly worth doing. There are some cost saving pieces in here so take a look around. So first we're going to install the CPU. You need to make sure the triangle piece at the bottom here, the marker, is in line with the socket so you don't bend any of the pins. I always put these in place before I put it in the case. Also insert the RAM here. Doing it outside the case just makes it a lot easier. Install the CPU cooling fan here, stock cooler. Note here that I did actually put the fan power in the wrong socket. There is one further round um, at the top of the motherboard that you'll need to put in. So we're going to head here and build in the case. We install the power supply into this thermal tape case. We install the ISO shield. We install the motherboard. Let me start to put in some of the cables here. I'm going to use the minimum amount of cables. So the first one's the motherboard cable. We've got the CPU cable coming up next. We've got the SATA disk cable. Note here, I'm not going to actually screw the SATA disk in because I'm intentionally going to put this into a frame. So I'm just putting mine at the bottom of the case. It's up to you guys if you want to tidy this up. Um, this is pretty, I'm normally just putting it in the bottom here. We install the SATA cable. install the VGA cable or it's going to be the RX480 cable to put on the side here. There's a USB plug here and then you get the additional power switches for the case to be able to control the external controls. And final component to go in is the Sapphire RX480. I'll explain to you later on why I put the Sapphire RX488 gigabyte. But for now we'll just carry on. So this is the finished product, what it looks like. It's not too bad a build, not overly complicated. Certainly a good starting point to allow expansion, which you'll have to do outside of the case. So 
carrying on here, the first thing you need to do is you need to download the Ubuntu. I'm going to use this Linux version. I will do a tutorial on Windows. Let me know if you want me to do that in the comments and I'll create one specifically for Windows 10. Once you've got the ISO here from Ubuntu, one thing to notice is that all the links for these websites will be in the description as well and all links to the products will also be in there. So once you've installed Ubuntu, you need to install Rufus which creates a bootable USB pen drive. As you can see, that's why I had a USB pen drive lying around. You'll need one that's about five gig, six gig. This one's a 64 gig. So create this ISO using these steps here. I just renamed the volume to Ubuntu so I can easily find it on my pen drive. And then select the ISO and location. And then you click start. Simple as that, it will build the USB pen drive. Just click yes through all these commands here when installing it onto the pen drive. These are just giving you warnings. It will format the pen drive, so note that all your information will be gone. So that's one thing to remember is to back up that pen drive if you want to keep the data. So once the pen drive is finished and installed here by Rufus, you'll get these folder layout. And on the pen drive, just check there, there, and place the USB pen drive in the back of the new mining PC. One thing to note here is that you will need another PC to create this USB pen drive. Once you place the pen drive in the back of the mining PC, you'll then be promoted, hopefully with this grub screen here. If you don't get this, go into the BIOS by using delete key. You've got a keyboard plug into the mining PC and select the USB drive as the bootable pen drive. You'll then get this promotion here of which install to run. We're gonna click on install Ubuntu. So the first screen you're gonna get prompted with is the language. For me, obviously, it's English. Pick the language that would be relative to your country. Then click Install third-party software for these graphics and hardware. This makes sure some of the drivers are installed off the bat. We are going to have to install the RX480 driver independently, and I'll show you that in a sec. So click here, Raise Disk, and install Ubuntu, because obviously this is a brand new SSD drive as well that we're going to go onto. This is going onto the ScanDisk 128 gig. If you are doing it on another hard disk that you've used, just remember that you're going to erase the data on that disk. I'm going to pick your time zone. I'm going to pick London here, the one that's relevant to yourself. Pick your keyboard language. Even though I'm in the UK, I'm using a US keyboard, Black Widow from Razer. Put your name in here. I'm just going to call mine Miner. Pick a password that you want to use. It's up to you if you want it to be strong or not. I, potentially, I would advise you pick something relatively strong. Or fair as mine is here. This is my go-to password. I also click log on automatically because I don't care about this PC particularly. And I'm going to pick uh, and remove the name in so it just says my name on the network. Now for you, it's up to you if you want to use it as a go-to PC and don't want it to be easily hacked, so you probably put a slightly stronger password. I'm just going to wipe this OS around completely, so for me it doesn't really matter. For Ubuntu, depending on the speed, this PC took about five to six minutes to install it. Depending on what spec you're using, it could take a little bit longer. Just bear with it until you get to the end of the process. So at the end here, Ubuntu's been installed. We're now prompted to restart now. So click that. Once it's restarted, we then get this window here from Ubuntu, giving us this keyboard shortcuts and just a blank desktop. For the next step, and this is specifically for the RX 480, if you're using a different GPU here, you are gonna to need to check out what driver you need to install on Ubuntu or whether it will just work from the box. And to do that, you go to this URL, which I'll put in the description, select your product, you need a desktop graphics card, you pick the version, which is the RX 480 in this case, or if you've got some other version, pick that one. Pick your product here, which is the 400 series, and you've one two. Once you've got this, it gives you some ideas of what you're going to download. What we want to get for is this uh, driver here, this pro version. Save that into your download folder. And then open up this file here as well, and this will tell you the commands you need to run within Linux. So the next step now is to extract the tar file or the zip file. I'll just run through the command here on their PEL2 guide. So in the final command when we're running sudo reboot, make sure you type it right on like I have done here. So nearly the end here, the next part is to install the ether miner or ether miner as they call it. Again, these commands here are installing it from the PPA repository. We'll just run through these commands here and on your PC takes, it will depend on how much time it takes. Click yes or anything that prompts up.
So here we are in the final stages. We're actually going to start mining. We're going to make some coin. We're going to be doing this via the Ethereum pool here. You can use other pool mining pools. I suggest if you've got anything below 100 mega hash, you don't mine solo. If you want me to do a solo mining tutorial, let me know and I will do that also. But for now, this is a 20 mega hash to 30 mega hash with the right firmware, which I'll show again as well in another tutorial. And that'll be coming up in the relatively next week or so. But I'm going to be using this pool, Ethereum pool. This is purely for this example. Have a look around. I'll put a link in the description of which ones are good, which ones are bad. You make your mind up. This is how the string and all its parameters will look like. You have to make your own string, which will look something like this. I'll show you my example in a minute. I'll just go through what the string means. And this again is for this Ethereum pool specifically. Each one like Dwarf um, or some of the other ones will have their own type of string, but they all follow very similar principles. So you're always going to have to type etherminer-g-f. This means graphics GPU and force it. Put the URL in of your pool. This parameter here means how much hash rate. For this instance, we're going to put in 22 because I know what the kind of base is going to be like. You can put more in or not. You generally will either get penalized sometimes or not. So try and keep it where it should be at 22 hash maybe for this card, 20 to 22 on the standard firmware. You put in the address that your money's gonna go to or your coin or ether coin. And you'll need to create a wallet for this. You can either use Geth, which quite a lot of people are using, but I recommend something like my ether wallet. That's pretty good. Um, have a look around again. If you want me to show you a bit more detail, let me know and I'll create a video just dedicated to doing those wallets. And the final end here is an identifier for the rig. So one of the things you could do here, like I do, is I have multiple rigs. And what you can do here is put a unique identifier like RX480. If you've got an RX580, you can put that on there. And then in some of the statistics of the pools, some of them show you these. It'll have that unique identifier against the hash rate so you can see which rig's making the most hash. That's totally up to you. It's an optional extra, basically. So to create this string, like I said, here's what mine looks like compared to that string. So you've got this terminal part, G-F, then I've got the pool. Then I've got the minor part with 22 hash that I put in. Then I've got my unique key. And at the end here, I could put, um, which I will do now, RX480. I don't know which one's making the money. Once you've got that string completed, you want to save this to stop you having to re-enter it all the time. Open up a terminal, paste your key in, push enter. And off it goes to the pool, it gets the DAG, which is the database. And it'll start trundling through a few commands and eventually you should see your hash rate. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see some more of these, let me know. We'll be dropping some more videos. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you particularly want to see in the next week or two and I'll do some more videos. If not, I will produce the firmware version for the RX480. And I'm also getting some 1070s to compare. As you can see here, the hash rate now it started to mine is between 20 and 22. It's about 22.5 here looking at this rate at the moment against this pool and it's now making you some money. So as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again later. Bye-bye.